All right, guys. There's a lot of talk of the rental car being business being passive income. Now, I'm not the typical person who started a rental car business. So, with that, we will have a different uh, take because I have 21 cars and one of the things that I am seeing is there's a lot of little work. I don't know what I mean by that. Essentially, I completed phase one. Phase one was acquiring the cars, putting them on the platforms, getting them rented out. That's phase one. Now, phase two is to make adjustments. Um, like once I'm done buying cars to August to September, I'm not gonna buy any more cars because what I want to do is reshift the fleet. And one of the things I've learned when you're getting these cars, now this is gonna be for someone who wants to be aggressive. This isn't for someone who wants, you know, when I only had like eight cars, it only took maybe four hours a month to manage. So if you don't have a lot of cars, but once again, it's still not passive. Let's be really clear about that. Passive income means, you know, it, it's almost kind of passive, but it's not truly passive because I'm gonna explain to you, because like I said, I got a lot of information, a lot of knowledge here. Um, when I start buying cars, I have a better intake process because I just uh, did an oil change with someone um, because I missed that car. Because typically I was acquiring the cars and I was going to get an oil change. Because when you're buying used cars, understand that these people do nothing. They trade them in. They do absolutely nothing. And I got caught with that. So essentially it's my car. I'm going to pay for the oil changes and maintenance. So I'm going to work on this the next few months of getting a better intake process because this is one of the things because people are going to get the cars and they're going to be driving them they're going to be driving the heart and whatever little issues that you miss are going to crop up um fortunately the majority of the cars that's kind of why i like the bmws because i can go into the settings and see what maintenance needs to be done or what maintenance is good for x amount of miles and Acras have a weird little menu that I gotta learn. And the Camrys have been rock solid. But this isn't a passive income business if you scale up. If you have two, maybe three cars. Essentially, it wasn't a lot of work for me when I only had eight cars. Now that I have 21 cars, it is, it's like a job. Um, it, it really is because you know one of the reasons is and I'm going to do a whole video on acquiring cars and buying cars once I go ahead and put together my uh, intake process but it's like a job man it is like a job and I just rented out a car I have three five I've got 16 cars rented out right now and there's rental there is the management of the rental cars there's the management of that because you you got to be up to date and with maintenance issues because essentially next time when I start buying cars I'm going to actually work slow it down a little bit and go ahead and get the car because what I've been doing is having inspections done after I bought the car, and I haven't been doing inspections before buying the car. So what I'm gonna do is set it up where I can have an inspection done before I buy the car, and then whatever little issues, like give you an example. I bought a BMW Saturday, and the guy showed me they spent like 2,400 bucks on it. Well, guess what? When I took it to my guy, it needed another $1,500 worth of work. 1500 so it, 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 it's this, this whole thing of this business being super easy now I will
will say if you're dealing with new cars you're not going to have these issues if you're dealing with new cars but i'm dealing with used cars so i should make that really really clear and it is it's it's not passive even if you're dealing with new cars if you have 15 20 cars in your fleet it is not a passive income business it is not passive it's very active because essentially one of the things I got to do is I got to go out I got more things to do because there's always something to do there's little things like give you an example I had an Acura where the battery just died now what happens when the battery dies on these cars you have to reset the radio which can be a pain in the booty because uh, fortunately this Acura had the code to the radio in the glove compartment but essentially it, it seems to be taking forever to reset so I don't know that may be an issue um, I may have to take it to somewhere to get that fixed and it's all these little issues like that um, oil changes brake jobs uh, wheel alignments and things like that um, you got to get these done so these next two months and two weeks is about getting everything adjusted and getting, you know, because I'm going to probably trade out of all of the SUVs because that can, I can go from five vehicles to 10 vehicles by doing that. And that's where I make my money on scale because I figured out some stuff. But this ain't nowhere near passive when you're scaling up. Uh, anyone that has a fleet of 15 or more vehicles, I would say 10, just depending on what you have. Um, but one of the things is, because I'm getting ready to do some experiments with Toro. And I've got a Mini that I can put on Toro. And I have um, another BMW which went out two days after I bought it on hire car for what I wanted to rent it out for, um, comparable to what I would get on Turo. Same kind of money. So, you know, essentially, one of the things that you gotta do, and I would advise you to start off with one or two cars and cars that are paid off. I would advise you to start off with cars that are paid off because until you buy the car and put the car on the platform, you're not you're not going to know what it's going to do. And one of the things I've been doing, and this is really interesting, um, DoorDash. I had an Uber driver tell me he made sixty six hundred bucks last month. And I had someone who was doing DoorDash tell me he made 5000 last month. And a lot of people are moving to DoorDash because I was talking to a guy and he was telling me some horror stories that have been happening to Uber drivers. He told me one of his friends got shot in the head by this grown up passenger. That blows my mind. I'm like, why would you want to shoot your Uber driver? Get in the car, they take you where you need to go. That should be the end of it. But uh, everyone isn't like me. So we got that going on. So um, essentially, that was the reason that I bought the Mini. Because I figured the Mini, it's a four-cylinder, it's a zippy little car, would be a great DoorDash car, right? Guy rented it. He don't do DoorDash. It's just kind of funny. So once again, you never know who's going to rent your car and for what purpose until you put it on the platform now two months from now i will have a greater understanding i will have more clarity i will have more experience um right now i have six weeks of experience doing this and we're on track to do ten thousand maybe twelve thousand this month it just depends upon how some things go and this is something that keeps happening when I have a car on hire car, and when I have a car on Turo, once someone books it on either app, then someone else wants it on the other app. 
that consistently happens. Consistently. Like, I had someone on hire car who wants the uh, Mercedes, but it's already reserved for the same time frame by someone on Turo. Uh, I'm just like, it's, it's annoying that that keeps happening. Same time frame, I'm just like, what is going on? Because, you know, essentially, you know, if they had wanted the car, you know, Monday through Wednesday, we've been good. Nope. They wanted it the same exact days, and it's a weekend. So I'm, I'm getting to see that. I, I, e -message, I messaged the girl. It's like, look, um, this car's already rented out on Turo, so we will see how that goes. Um, so th these are little frustrations because everybody wants the same car. Uh, I, I got a BMW 550, which is at BMW right now for recall work because I tried to list it on Turo, but because they had a recall, Turo will not let you list cars until that recall item is handled or fixed. Now, here's another issue that's going on right now. Everybody is busy uh, getting your car fixed, service and stuff. Like, uh, one of the things I learned is if the car has issues, like one of the BMWs I bought, uh, when you stopped, they had vibration. The dealer, he fixed it, and he's got his own resources. And this is something I got to get my own resources because he was able to get that car in the shop, new brakes and stuff ordered, and turn around in one day. And I went ahead and picked it up the next day, and that Sunday, that car rented out. So I need my own resources, and this is something that in this two and a half month period, I'm going to build. I already got my, I already got my mechanics. I already got my mechanics, but you're going to need a good mechanic. That's going to be crucial. Uh, when you get your car, you're going to need to do an oil change. You need to have it inspected. You're, you know, there, there's, there's all of this non-paying work that you have to do to get to the paydays. That's one of the things that you have to do. And essentially, uh, I got a credit card. I made a thousand dollar payment this morning out of the Mac Daddy Auto account to that credit card. And I'm gonna have to spend 1500 bucks on that credit card today. And tomorrow I'm gonna make a $1,300 payment. So at some point, all of this is going to calm down. You know, right now I am spending money like a crackhead. Uh, I calculated, I spent $16,000 in sales tax on the cars I bought. $16,000 in sales tax. And that's not, and that's something that's not going to go away. Um, even when I get my dealer's license, once I take that car to the DMV and I go ahead and get a tag and I turn the title, because uh, essentially I'm going to create a new entity, Mac Daddy Delux Deluxe Rentals. That's going to be the new entity because I have to separate the rental business from my car business. But I can run both businesses through the same bank account. So I'm not worried about that. But the entity is important because once I get my commercial insurance, and this is something else too. Fun fact for all of the folks who was talking crap about GPS trackers. The majority of the rental cars in America don't have GPS trackers. Let me say that again. The majority of the cars in America don't have GPS tracker. This is Hertz, this is Enterprise, this is these large multi-billion dollar companies that don't have GPS trackers. So I'm doing the same thing to these large companies. Now, GPS tracking is very interesting because some places it's controversial. In California, they're trying to push through a law that they must tell you that there's a GPS tracker on the car and they're tracking you. In Georgia, you can do what you want. If you own the car, you can put a GPS tracker on it and you can track folks, don't have to say nothing. But essentially, I had a lot of people talking about, oh, you know, bezels and all this other stuff. And I wanna say this to you, to you weak, moist men. Starting a business is risky. And I am taking what I like to consider a calculated risk. 
uh, once the new intake process, because in two months, I should find me some GPS person. And I want the GPS and I want the kill switches. And a lot of people's like, why don't you just get the little thing that you can plug into the little port under the dash? All right. I am very acutely aware of the money that I am spending. And, you know, go ahead and get those little ports and stick them under there, right? And then I'm going to turn around and put in a hardwired GPS system. I'm just spending the same money twice for, in my opinion, an issue that's not going to be a problem all the time. Yes, there will be yard birds, there will be idiots, there will folks that will take advantage, but most folks are not going to do that. So, uh, I got to find me a GPS person. I got to find my own person who is skilled and competent because that's another reason that I'm probably getting rid of the Range Rovers because I have a prob I have a feeling that installing the kill switch in those is going to be an issue. I, I just have a feeling. I just have just a strong, strong feeling. And I'm going to continue to buy cars and put them out there and rent them out there without GPS tracking. Because um, based on my calculations, I would have lost thirty thousand dollars just letting the car sit to wait to get GPS tracking losing $30,000. And this, this is something that a lot of you folks don't understand about business. It is about cash flow. It is not about security and safety. It's about cash flow. And right now, this month, I've made $5,000. And that's why I said we're tracking toward 10, um, maybe, maybe 12, because I've got vehicles, because I'm getting ready to work with the pricing, because I got um, two BMWs, they're in the shop. I should get them back today. And then I've got the Mercedes goes out on Turo Thursday and I got two Range Rovers. But by the end of the week, I should have everything rented. And that's, the that's the, once again, cash flow. Cash flow. You gotta have cash flow. Like, if you, like, once again, you know, y'all can be like going off on me, I don't really care. I don't care if people speed in these vehicles. I don't care if, you know, do whatever you do. As long as you don't wreck the vehicle, you pay me, and you bring the vehicle back when the rental's over. I really don't care. I am not emotionally connected to these vehicles. This vehicle, the Porsche, I'm emotionally connected to. This is my baby. This is my baby. Only thing I haven't, I had is cartoons. Uh, I had high flow cats put on it. And it's already low, so I didn't have to lower it. And I will not be renting this out. I will not be renting this out because I would be pissed if I rented this out and someone put regular gas in this. I would be pissed. So, essentially, these cars are tools. These cars are employees. And their goal is to go out and bring me back dollars. And sitting to get a GPS tracker for three weeks or two months, waiting for these folks to open up a space, my 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 car, they ain't working. They just sitting there. That's just dead money. And I know a lot of you feel that I should do it. And you know, once again, I'm gonna continue to be transparent and honest because uh, I know that a lot of you weak cowards who will never start a business because you weak, you scared, you scared. You're scared. You're scared to take a risk because you feel that you may lose something. Let me tell you something, partner. I've lost $250,000. And why is that number significant? This business cost me, at the moment, $265,000. Between buying the cars and getting the secured credit card for the business. Because I want it. Because, once again, if you build a fleet, you're going to need capital to fix cars oil changes, little incidentals, and since I now have, uh, I should have that card probably in the next week, it took Well Fargo's forever to, to get it going on, but I will have a dedicated card for insurance, because essentially, you don't want to be in a position, because I want my cash flow to stack. I don't want to have to be eating out of my cash flow all the time. I want my cash flow to stack, so 
uh, essentially the cash flow isn't going to stack because all cash flow that comes in is going to pay off that credit card because that is 90% of the expenses on that credit card came from the car rental business. Getting key fobs, um, oil changes, re repairs, all that stuff going on that credit card. So I figure if I do 7,000 the rest of the month, which will be at 12,000, that will almost pay off that credit card. And that will get that money back. And then the month of July, will get me my insurance money back. It will get me all of the interest, uh, the taxes that I paid, it will get me all of that back. Um, so we will see how that goes. It will get me all of the tax money back and they're not open. It will get me all of the tax money back it will get me the insurance money back and I will start to move toward a operating profit. Cause right now I'm all up in the red because I'm still spending, you know, until, you know, I'm still spending money. I'm still spending money. So I already got the $6,500 in repairs back. Got that back. So we're good there. And once I get this credit card paid off, because this is how I'm keeping track of all my expenses, every expense goes on this credit card. And then once it's paid off, then I should get the Mac Daddy Auto credit card, which will be have nothing on it. So whatever, oil changes, alignments, whatever I need to be get done, I will have that credit card dedicated for those purposes. But the next two months are going to be interesting because uh, I'm talking to everyone that rents. I'm asking them a bunch of questions. Like today, the guy brought in the car for the oil change. I asked him how many cars did he look at because it's really interesting on hire car. There are many, there, 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 are, there are one, two, three. I'm going to say there's three, maybe four big players on hire car in Atlanta. And what I do every day is I go through, <clears throat> see where my cars are in the listings, and I, I'm just seeing what they're doing. Um, and there's one guy, he has like 16 cars. And he's got them, in my opinion, priced too high for what they are. This is something else. Uh, I talked to the guy, I asked him, why did he rent that car? And he used to own that car. So he knew that car pretty well. And that's why he rented it. And he said the price was right. So one of the things that you have to understand about this business, because like everybody and their mama is buying a car to throw on Turo. Because it's so called, like I said, one, two, three cars, that is semi-passive income. It's not a lot to manage. If you buy a new car, you're not gonna have the problems that I have. However, if you want to make some real money, because Toro has this advertisement, you can make $50,000 a year passive income if you have five cars. This is what they're pushing because they need more cars on the platform, right? And depending on where you are, because my new pricing structure, because I'm going to tell you an experiment that I'm getting ready to run. And I can do this because I'm not emotionally attached to the car. The drop top. I got it on Toro for $95, right? $95 a day for the rest of this month. Then next month, the price goes up. Because you got to be careful. Because when you bomb the price, and if you don't go in there and adjust it on the calendar for the future, what you will have are people who will book your car in the future for that cheap price. So what you want to do is go in and manually adjust the price so I have it bombed because I need to get some trips. I feel that I'm gonna get three, maybe four trips um, before the end of the month on that car at that price, which is fine. Because once again, it is an employee. Its job is to go out and bring back money. If it's sitting, it ain't making no money. So it ain't working. So I I'm gonna see how does that manipulate the Toro algorithm because this is something that's weird that's happened. The Range Rover, which someone on hire car rented out for a month, 
So Toro has what's called a snooze feature where you can go ahead and make your car unavailable. And I went ahead and did that. And guess what? The car kept getting booked. It get booked back to back to back to back. And I had to cancel these trips. And when you cancel trips, Toro will uh, charge you $50. Your first cancellation is free. But if you do multiple cancellations, they will charge you $50 per cancellation. And if you do too many cancellations, they will unlist the car off of the platform. So this was like, so that Range Rover was in high demand. I don't know what it was. And the black Range Rover I had had too many miles to list on the platform. And that that's something else. It's real tricky finding an old cheap car that has the right years and has the right mileage that you can put on Toro. That is a fine balancing act because you're, you're not going to find a three or $4,000 car that you can list on Toro. No, not unless you're a dealer and you, you have access to the auction. No, that ain't happening. Uh, typically, you're going to be between the $8,000 range to $12,000 range. And that's going to be on something booty. What I am really beginning to understand is the mind of the renter. Uh, many of these people, um, they want to rent something nice. And this is what, like, one of the, I'm going to say he's the third player on the platform. I actually, I, I, I think, I'm not 100% sure because I, I don't know because essentially when the car rents out, you can't see it on the platform. It's gone. So I don't, I, I, I assume he has 16 cars because every time I go through there, I consistently see his 16 cars. And um, one of the things is he has a lot of Priuses. He has Sentra. He's got a few Hondas. And in your mind, these should be doing well. In your mind, they should be doing well. But they've been sitting because, all right, I got a BMW for $55 a day. You could be riding in a nice BMW for $55 or you could drive a Sentra for $55. What you gonna do? They're gonna choose the BMW. Uh, I've had people tell me, it's like, and this is something else too. If you're doing hire car, people will look for days before they choose a car. They will look for days because they're looking for something that they want to drive. That's what they're looking for. They're looking for something that they want to drive. They're looking for something that they want to um, be happy in. And that, that psychology, because uh, the guy who rented the Mini, he sent me a message. Because the Mini, I, I will tell you something. I'm probably going to get some more Mini Coopers. And I'll tell you why. It's a fun car. It is a fun car. I got a red one. It's, it's got the tinted windows. Um, it is a nice car. The stereo bumps and it is good on gas. So I'm probably going to, but I'm going to get a four door. And that is the Clubman. That's the mini Clubman. And I've been pricing those because essentially during these two months, I'm going to still do research and make a wish list of cars I'm going to start buying in either August or September. Just kind of depends because um, September. I have a bond that's going to mature. I don't even talk about that that much. But that's going to be $40,000. And I'm just going to take that money and throw it in the business, which will put me at three hundred dollars for my money in this business. And after that, I'm not putting any more money in the business. The money, the business is going to have to generate money to make, uh, to grow and to build and put income. Because essentially if i have because right now i have 21 cars and i trade all these um and i'm gonna tell you why i'm gonna trade them in because i don't have my dealer's license just yet so i want to reserve my sales because you can sell six cars five or six cars without being a dealer so i'm gonna trade those especially those uh range rover sports one i can't wait to get the titles to them i wish i had the titles to them because I'm going to trade those bad boys in and I'm going to get two cars. And that's going to give me 
30 cars. I'm going to have 31 cars once I get the titles to these bad boys back. And I can trade them in and then I can upgrade. And some of the cars I'm probably going to get, good lord, I'm probably going to get a BMW and I'm probably going to get uh, a Mini because that's what I can get for one of those Range Rovers. I can trade those Range Rovers in and get a Mini Cooper and a BMW. So I may have five more BMWs and five more Mini Coopers. Because the Mini Cooper, like like I said, I, I'm really surprised because you know I saw him in, in that movie, the, the the Italian job, and I was like, okay. But actually, actually driving one, it's a really nice little car. And it's a car that's gonna appeal to women. It's a car that's gonna appeal to hipsters. So we will see. But that's kind of the, the plan right now. But this ain't no passive income business once you start scaling. Once again, if you just have a handful of cars, it's not gonna really take a lot of time and a lot of effort. But how much money are you gonna make with a handful of cars? I just told you I have 21 cars and also I didn't have I didn't start the month off with 21 cars. That's why I want to have the July where I entered the month of July with 21 with 20 cars because the Porsche got stolen. And today I'm calling the police. I'm gonna go ahead and file that police report because I cannot get I can't put a claim in without a police report. And I'm not getting any help. It's like I'll call and I keep getting these stories. And I'm gonna tell the cop everything, and you know, we will see. We will see. I wouldn't be surprised if they recover this car quickly after I put in a police report. I wouldn't be surprised because the Porsche is quite distinctive. There's not a lot of them on the road like that. Um, there's not. So this is gonna be a really visible car. All right. Lord. It's going to be a visible car, and um, there are not that many of them in the country. I've looked because I wanted to get another one because I know it would be hot. And this is something else you will find out when you go for the premium. Because uh, here's another little tip if you're looking for a certain kind of car, if you go up, like let's say you're looking for a 2007 BMW 530, right? You can go up to 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011, check all those years, and you will find some better year models cheaper than the 2007. I've, I've, I've done that all the time. That's how I ended up with the 550. Um, the 550 was going, it was a 2009, and it was going for what, like 2008s and 7s were going for. Um, and it, actually, it has enough, it's, it's, the year is correct, and it doesn't have as many miles on it. But once again, due to the fact that it had a recall on it, I couldn't put it on turbo. So just depending on what goes on, because like I said, I have an issue with turbos made unavailable because essentially for me, higher car is easier because they're gonna keep the car a minimum of three days, a minimum of three days maybe a week or two, or in the case of a few cars, a few months. Uh, the guy, I think, with the Camry, he's gonna keep that. Um, but this is not, you know, once again, if you're comfortable making like an extra 500 bucks a month, keep it the buck, then this could be passive. You can make an extra 500 bucks a month. Let's say you're in a situation where you have a car that's paid off, that's just sitting around, and it fits the the, the, the platform guidelines, throw it on there, and you can make an extra 500 bucks a month. So if you have three cars, because like, with Toro's calculation of five cars, 50,000, that means each car has to do $1,000. Um, that has not been my experience. Um, I feel that at $95 today, if the Mercedes goes out like a lot, because I only got to only have it at that pricing for two weeks just to get some trips. Um, 
if it goes out for a hundred bucks a day, that's three thousand dollars a month. That you know it does that for twelve months out of the year. It's thirty six hundred thirty six thousand dollars. But once again, uh, I can tell you <clears throat> from experience, I had the Porsche on there. The Porsche stayed in and out. The Porsche stayed in and out, um, and it broke. And this is something else. If you have a car on Toro and it breaks down on a rental, Toro's gonna take it off of the site and they're going to have you submit a form from a, a certified mechanic that this car is mechanically sound to list back on the site. And that's one of the reasons I just put it on <clears throat> hire car. So that's another thing. Toro is very specific about how the car's on their platform. But what make, make rest assured, you have two or three cars you can make. Um, I'm going to say 1500 bucks a month. So if you are in the position where you have like three cars that are paid for and you don't have a car note on, I would not do Toro with three or four cars of car payments because let's say you make 1800 bucks a month but your car payments on three cars come up to 1200 bucks a month. You've only made $600 profit. To me, that ain't really worth it for what you're doing because um, you got a lot of stuff on your cars, you got a lot of stuff on your credit, and also if these cars get wrecked, I guarantee you, if you don't, like on the Mercedes, I got gap insurance. Now that's if I wreck it, let's put it that way, if I wreck it. If it wrecks on the platform, I don't really know what's gonna happen. But, um, yeah. So, essentially, this isn't passive. And what's the thing, a lot of people, a lot of people are putting this off as it's passive income. You don't have to do anything. And uh, I'm just here to tell you, it's not. It's not, if you wanna make some real money. Now, what is real money? 10,000 to 30,000 a month. Once you get to that level, it's going to become a small business. It's not going to be passive income. You're going to have to do a lot more work. You're going to have to manage it. You're going to be answering questions. And one of the things I'm already seeing are the weekends are huge. The weekends are huge. So what I'm going to have to do in the future, because I'm making notes and stuff, of I'm gonna have to hire someone and weekends are gonna be included. So what I'm gonna have to do is have them work every other weekend because I don't wanna take all their weekends, but weekends are huge. Weekends are huge. And this is when you know, a lot of people know they need a car, but they will wait until Saturday. And like last night, I had a guy who called me at eight o'clock and he wanted to pick up a car at eight o'clock. And I was like, shut it down because uh, essentially yesterday was a long day. And um, yeah, so there will not be any car rental courses anytime soon. I fully expect it to take me six months to really figure a lot of this stuff out. That's what I'm looking at. Six months to um, really doing what I need to do and at that point, I think I'll be good. So these next two and a half months where we can shape stuff up, get things fixed, and more importantly, recoup that money. Because when I go ahead and start trading these cars in, the sales tax and the dealer's fees and all these little fees they tack on, I cannot get that back. I can't get that back. So I gotta earn my way out of it and make myself whole because like I said, when I realized I paid like $16,000 in sales tax on these cars, I was like, holy moly. And I'm gonna go through the cars that I'm going to get rid of because I feel that I paid maybe $6,000 in sales tax. I'm not sure, um, I gotta look at it. But I will make sure that I get that back and then when I trade out of them, I'll still be ahead versus losing money. Because this, this is the whole theme of this. Because, you know, going back to the GPS trackers, if just sitting around and waiting around to someone can uh, actually 
do these trackers, I would have lost, I did the calculation. I would have lost, and this is, you know, future projections, 30 to $40,000 just sitting around to get a tracker. That's a crazy amount of money to lose due to fear. Once again, you know, if you're a coward, you know, you're a coward. Maybe you don't need to start a business. If you're scared, scared little bee, maybe you don't need to start a business. Because essentially, this is for the rough, the rugged, and the tough. All right, make sure I get in here correctly. So that's all I got for you guys. Uh, more information will be coming up. Give me some time to get the video about the vehicles I bought up because uh, that's going to take a little time. So that's all I got for you guys. I will see you in the next one.